Hi everyone, I'm Marco. And I'm Tanisha. In the security spotlight, we heard about the importance of a zero trust approach to security. And in our demo today, we will show you how to implement zero trust access to be more secure and more productive. And a quick shout out to our audience. This is truly live. Dive into the chat, we want to hear from you. Tell us what you do and where you're joining from. We can see you, check it out, Marco. Sure enough, we can see everybody down here and we're so excited to interact and talk to you all today. If you're still hanging out on the Next Event website, click on the blue button that says join the interactive experience to activate these features. Okay, so let's get into it. We're gonna cover three things. One, how your entire workforce can securely access legacy and modern applications without exposing your network to attacks. And two, how you can get better protection against threats and data loss right from within your browser. And three, how you can gain visibility into unsafe activity even if users aren't on a corporate network or device. And we're gonna do all of this with Beyond Corp Enterprise. Beyond Corp Enterprise, or BCE as we call it, is Google Cloud's zero trust access solution. With BCE, you can use Chrome to access apps and resources. In the background, Google's network protects and proxies traffic, enforcing access policies. These policies use factors such as identity, device info, location, and third-party signals to authorize access to apps and data that you need to do your job. That's awesome, Marco. So let's get to the good stuff. Think about it. How easy is it for your developers to work remotely and securely right now? We know it's a tough task. We know that making life easy for developers while also protecting your code is critical. That's why our new Beyond Corp Enterprise feature, Client Connector, is so important. It enables zero trust access to legacy thick client applications. Yeah, I think a lot of people run into that today. So let's take a look at how developers would use it. We set up this laptop for the Symbol Group. By the way, they're a fictional company. Symbol has been around since the 1970s and they haven't modernized all their applications. Sound familiar? One of their main developer applications is still hosted in a private data center. Yeah, I see this quite a bit. Until recently, Symbol developers didn't have a way to access this application remotely without a VPN. The security team had constant concerns that remote users could expose the network, or even worse, their source code to attacks or hackers. But now, using Beyond Corp Enterprise Client Connector, they can access client server apps without a VPN. Let me show you how Symbol developers would connect via SSH to their Git repository. And before I show you, let me just say, don't blink or you might miss it. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and swing on over to our developer machine. From here, I can simply open up Google Chrome. Once Google Chrome has actually loaded, you can see I've authenticated to my Kit application repository already. Up in the right-hand corner, I simply click on my endpoint verification extension. And from here, I click on start connection. My endpoint is being postured in the background and a secure connection is being made to GitLab. From there, I can simply then, once it's turned green, of course, minimize my browser. And then on the left-hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal application. This is my thick client application. I'm gonna then go ahead and run a Git clone. And that's actually gonna pull down the code from Git to my local machine. And there's my application pulled down locally onto my endpoint. I know that probably seemed pretty straightforward, but what you might not have noticed was first, there were no clients. It's all in the browser you probably already had open. Second, in the background, continuously validating the identity and the device and a bunch of other factors is our identity uh, where proxy. And third, our TCP proxy seamlessly and uh, securely forwards all of the traffic. The fact that developers around the world can do this remotely, simply, and securely without all the hassle of a VPN is pretty awesome. And with Beyond Corp Enterprise, workers are only allowed access to applications they're permitted to use. So we prevent unwanted lateral movement across the network. So audience, we want to know, would you use this method for remote access in your organization? Awesome. Now, let's see how your workforce can securely access modern web applications even from non-corporate devices. 
Let's look at how Symbol does it for their extended workforce, their call center contractors. Meet Rhonda. She's one of thousands of remote contractors who help with Symbol's 24-7 support during the holiday shopping season. So, security community, can you share in our chat? In the past year, have you onboarded new temporary workers? Did you send them a laptop or make them install software so they could be more secure? Looks like that would be a yes. Contractors also tend to be more vulnerable to attacks. Last year, 44% of organizations experienced a breach, and 74% of those breaches were the result of giving too much privileged access to third parties. So for Symbol, keeping those users off the corporate network decreases the risk of being exposed to attacks like ransomware. And here's where using BeyondCorp Enterprise comes through again for Symbol. Contractors and other employees are able to BYOD, onboard quickly, and use a device that they feel comfortable with, while BCE layers of protection keep them secure. That way, Rhonda can have secure access from her own device with clear separation between work and personal activity. Let me show you exactly what she sees as she begins her day. She first navigates to her Google Chrome browser. Then she navigates to her Symbol Call Center application. We'll enter in our credentials. We'll then do two-factor two authentication with our Titan security key. Now that we've passed two-factor authentication, we are in our Symbol Call Center application. You saw Rhonda log into Chrome with her Symbol credentials. This is what we call a Beyond Corp protected profile. It extends threat and data protection as soon as she logs in. As you can see, our agentless approach means no additional software. She gets right to work on her own device rather than picking up a laptop from IT and waiting hours while everything gets configured, therefore saving time and money. Awesome demo, Tanisha. And the thing about Zero Trust Access is that we don't automatically trust Rhonda just because she has login credentials. Authorization is continuous, not just when she first logs in. BeyondCorp Enterprise enforces Symbol's contractor access policies based on her identity and contextual information about her device and location, as well as the fact that she's authenticated with her Titan key. So security community, we want to know, what do you all use for multi-factor authentication? SMS codes, security keys, maybe an authentication app, or maybe something else completely. Hopefully it's not nothing. For me, it's my security key every day, especially since I don't always have my phone on me. Yeah, same here. <laughs> and they're so easy to use, and they provide the strongest protection against phishing. Regardless of what you use, some form of multi-factor authentication is critical for basic security hygiene, and we highly recommend it, especially for remote access. So let's take a look. I don't know if anybody has anything. Looks like um, most people use, let's say, security keys. B, awesome. That's what we love to hear. So let's get back to Rhonda, who just authenticated to the app, and explore how we can integrate threat and data protection right from within her browser. Great. Let's see her get to work and show a BC Protect symbol, their customers, and Rhonda with ease. It's been a really busy day. She doesn't have enough time to finish processing a batch of customer refunds before her next call. She wants to save the customer credit card information to a local file and do the refunds when things slow down. But saving the sensitive information to another location is against symbol security policy. Let me show you her experience. Let's navigate to our credit card file. And let's download this so Rhonda can do the refunds at another time. As you can see, she is blocked. You can see a message appear at the bottom that prevents her from doing so. Yeah, exactly. You can actually see where the credit card PDF has sensitive or dangerous content inside mm -hmm. of it. And I'll show you a policy that's been configured for Symbol that will detect risky behaviors just like these. So let's go ahead and look at our administrative console here, admin.google.com. Over on the left-hand side, uh, you can see the security menu. And if you scroll down underneath security, you can actually see data protection. And we're gonna go ahead and authenticate, obviously, as administrator securely. So let's go ahead and type in our password. 
and once I've authenticated, I'll be able to go ahead and look at my data protection policies. You'll notice here where it says manage rules, so we're gonna go ahead and drill into manage rules, and we can actually see now the credit card detection policy that Ron is hitting right here. I've also got detectors for things like social security or even detecting code that's being copied or pasted or shared um, by the developers. So as the admin, you can decide if you wanna automatically block user actions as symbol is done here, or if you want to trigger a warning to the user instead. And in addition to things like credit card numbers, you can also set specific DLP policies to detect file type as source code. So that way you can protect sensitive information and code by monitoring, controlling, or even blocking what people upload or download. Exactly. We can use very granular policies for this type of information in order to protect against exfiltration. So we just showed you some of the types of data protection policies you can set up. You can also customize access policies and the changes take effect in real time. This is a really big deal because you get continuous checking of whether a user is in or out of policy, giving you up to the second security controls. In fact, let's make an update here in real time for Rhonda. So, okay, community, we're gonna ask you which policy we should change. Is it her location, maybe her operating system policy, or whether or not she's on a corporate owned device. Please chime in here, we'd really love to understand and hear what, what you guys deem important. While we wait for the results to come in, I will say that I see these kinds of things all the time with my customers. They wanna be able to dynamically change policies depending on their circumstances. In particular, some customers are really interested in controlling for location, perhaps limiting access to only certain countries. Additionally, if a company is going through an org change or maybe a merger, being able to change access policies for select groups of users or departments in real time is crucial. And beyond these three choices in the poll, there are many other ways to customize your access policies based on what your organization needs. So let's go ahead and look back at the polls. And it uh, looks like corporate owned device. So awesome, I love it. And thanks for everybody contributing. Let's go ahead and do this right now. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on over into our GCP Cloud Console. And from here, we can see our IdentityWare proxy. We can actually see our symbol GitLab for our developer application. We can also see our call center application. And again, these applications could be anywhere. And for this demo, they're in GCP. We're gonna go ahead and select the call center application. And down at the bottom, we can see Rhonda over on the right-hand side in her application access policy. Let's go ahead and edit that. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the existing access policy that's allowing access from Europe and the US. And we're gonna go ahead and delete that one. And we're gonna add a new role. We're simply gonna go ahead and select Cloud IAP, IAP Web App User. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and select the access policy with which everybody chose, and that was require corporate device right. Okay. Just wanna make sure I remembered that correctly. Let's go ahead and save that in place. Click save. And when we save that policy, it's actually gonna be propagated across the world within a very short period of time. All of the proxies across Google's global network are immediately updated. So the next time any user tries to access a protected resource, they're evaluated against that new policy set. We mentioned continuous authorization earlier, and this is a key part of that. Authorization is not a one-time occurrence. So even if you begin a new session, that doesn't mean you'll have perpetual access. Exactly, and for companies like Symbol that employ hourly and temp workers, the ability to dynamically update access conditions is important. For instance, they could set these policies so workers only access applications and resources during their shift hours or working days, or only allow access from, only allow access from specific geographies. They also may want to require that devices have the most up-to-date operating systems and security patches. So this is an important condition to manage, especially for all the contractors using their own devices. Yeah, exactly. So because Rhonda doesn't meet that condition, which I just updated, she will no longer be able to access the call center application. Now, I think we've all faced this, and it's one of the most frustrating things about remote access, especially when you're using a VPN. You think you should have access to something, but for some reason, it's just not working. It's the worst. So let's see if our real-time change worked. So when Rhonda tries to open a new task in the call center application, let's take a look at what she sees. 
Let's navigate back to our home. And she's denied access as a result of the change Marco just did. But once again, BCE has Rhonda covered. She can report this error using our new feature, the Beyond Corp Enterprise Policy Troubleshooter, which informs end users that they're blocked and tells them how to get help quickly. So as you can see here, she would follow the prompt to email the admin to get help. Let's go ahead and email our admin. Our admin is now notified of us being blocked. With Beyond Corp Enterprise Policy Troubleshooter, admins can quickly fix issues that are blocking users, keeping them productive. Yep, you bet. Let me show you what the symbol admin would see on the other side of this request and how they could unblock users like Rhonda. So we're gonna go ahead and switch gears. Let's go over to Gmail, another Google application. And it looks like we got a notification for credit card detection, which is good. So. We know if uh, Rhonda is taking some interesting actions within her endpoint. Oh, and it looks like we just got an email from Rhonda because she's actually been blocked to an application. There's the link that she sent over. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we'll automatically be logged directly into the Google Cloud Platform. So from here, I can actually see the different policies and bindings that are in place. So let's go ahead and select the call center application. And over on the right-hand side here, we can actually see uh, the the uh, the granted conditions or the denials themselves. So let's go ahead and look at the binding details. So interestingly here, we can see that Rhonda failed to meet any of the la listed access levels. And sure enough, it's requiring a corporate device which was not granted. So I normally go back and unblock her by updating that policy so her access level is evaluated like any other contractor. But we're going to keep moving just in the interest of time. Sounds good. That was so easy, by the way. Yeah, super easy. Now, let's look how BC can give us better visibility into unsafe user activities, whether they're unsuccessful access attempts like we just saw or other anomalous activities across the apps that BC protects. Let me pull up the security dashboards in Chrome and give you all a look. So we're gonna jump back over into our Google Admin Console here. And in the same security menu on the left-hand side, we can actually click on dashboards. Wait for those to load out for a second. So Something to make note of here is that with Chrome Data Protection, you're actually gonna get a whole slew of different information. We can see Chrome high-risk users, we can see individual DLP incidents. If we wanted to scroll down a little bit, we could actually see how many users are forgetting their, uh, their passwords. If I can figure out how to use a trackpad here. Um, so we can see user login attempts, we can see, for example, messages that are encrypted. But what we're interested in is whether or not those, uh, those credit card numbers are making it through. So let's go ahead and drill in a little bit into one of these reports. So we can see every single file uploaded, file downloaded, web content upload, for example. And we can actually see every single time that this took place for our social security detection as well as credit card detection. And if we were to actually drill in on credit card detection here, and I think this is really cool, so I'm just gonna show everybody real quick here since we do have like another minute, and that is, uh, all the sensitive data transfers that are taking place, blocked, detected, or otherwise. So even if your organization isn't using all corporate-owned devices, you can still monitor security events and, and investigate those alerts. That's awesome, Marco. Audience, so what do you think? Let's, let, let us know in the chat. We definitely know this is something of interest. In the last 15 minutes, you've seen how our entire workforce can access modern and legacy applications securely, how you can improve threat and data protection, and how you can get better visibility into risky activity, even on unmanaged devices. Yeah, uh, our goal, right, at the end of the day with Beyond Corp Enterprise is to make your experience more productive and more secure. And our team looks forward to supporting you on your zero trust journey. Thanks so much for joining us today and participating. We have a live Q&A coming up next to answer all of your Google Cloud security questions, as well as any questions you might have had from the demo. So please stick around. Yeah, please do. And thank you all for joining. We'll see you all soon. Bye.